took and pounds, obviously, on that topic I alone. Know. And uh, I'm sorry to cut, cut you short, but I'm sure people have something to say when we give the uh, uh, the opportunity to contribute. Okay, our next speaker then is, is Richard Solly. He's from the uh, London Mining Network and is an advocate for people around the world who've been affected by corporations and mining interests. He recently returned from a trip to uh, Colombia and uh, we'll give this, uh, this day and perhaps uh, some insight into uh, what uh, he found in Colombia. So, uh, yeah. I went to Colombia just recently as part of Colombia Solidarity Campaign, which is one of London Mining Network's member groups. And the reason London Mining Network exists is that London is the main centre of world finance for mining. So although Toronto has got more mining companies listed on its stock exchange, we've got bigger ones and we raise more money. And that money is often used in such a way that it causes extreme destruction to people in other parts of the world where they don't want mining. And the mine that I just visited, the Serapon mine, which I first visited 14 years ago, is a very, very British mine. A British in its beginning, in its expansion, and in its uh, continuation. It began in the early 1980s, and its growth was intimately connected with the deliberate destruction of the British coal mining industry, where whole communities lived by mining and wanted to continue living by mining. That was linked with the deliberate destruction of farming and fishing communities in the northern part of Colombia, where people did not want to mine, where they wanted to live by farming and fishing, and where some of the indigenous people were completely opposed to mining in principle because it violated their spiritual values. The railway that takes the coal, the 150 kilometers from the mine to the coal port at Puerto Bolivar, on the, nearly at the northernmost point of South America. When I first went there 14 years ago, I saw embossed in the, the rails of that railway the words British Steel, made by British Steel. In 2000, three companies bought into the mine that at that time was run by the, or owned by the Colombian government and by the Exxon Corporation. And of those three companies, Anglo-American, BHP, Billiton and Glencore, two of them were listed on the London Stock Exchange. And now Glencore's listed on the London Stock Exchange as well. And a year and a half from first buying into that mine, they took over the whole thing. So that mine is now owned by three massive mining companies listed on the London Stock Exchange and um, with offices here in London. And because they're listed on the London Stock Exchange and have got uh, are in the top 100 companies, most people in Britain with a pension or a bank account or an insurance policy will be investing in them. It was a shock visiting the communities just recently because I had thought that in the 10 years since I'd last visited them, things were getting better. When I first visited, I visited a village called Tobacco, a beautiful village where people had built their own houses, they had their own little gardens where they had chickens and maybe some goats, fruit trees, some crops, and they had common land around the village where they ran their animals. They made a good living by small-scale agriculture and um, livestock raising. And then I visited the next year the ruins of that village because partly to clear the way for these three London-listed companies that most of us have got investments in, that village was bulldozed one day. The villagers were expecting a legal handover of lands, and what they found was 500 armed police and security personnel from the company with bulldozers who came and destroyed their homes that day and forced them out of their village. And I thought that over the years of kicking up an international stink about this, that the company had learned its lesson. And it's certainly the three multinational companies have got much better at uh, giving themselves a, a, a good, good publicity around the world. But I saw the communities that they have moved from the countryside to new communities. And they completely ignored over these past years the communities' wish to carry on living as farmers. The communities that we're working with keep on telling us we want to live as farmers. And the company has decided unilaterally that that's old fashioned. They don't want people to live as farmers. And instead of providing them sufficient farmland 
to carry on living as farmers. They provide them with small seed grants and advice about how to make a living selling mobile phones, running a taxi, or um, <coughs> having some kind of a shop. And you can't all be selling one another mobile phones, mending each other's motorbikes or whatever in a small community. So people, 96% of these new projects over the last three years have failed because people don't know how to do them. And so they're left without livelihood. So we are asked by those communities to carry on putting the pressure on these London listed companies, <laughs> on the companies that invest in them, and in our government, which gives them all the diplomatic support that it can, and which consistently refuses to regulate the London Stock Exchange in a way that would force companies to behave in the most elementary, decent way. Thank you.